Welcome to episode four of the Market Spotlights. I'm here with Rupert to discuss the London market. Hi Rupert. So yeah, today we'll be covering the main points covered in the London Market Spotlight report shared on LinkedIn. We'll be looking at London as an overview, comparing it to other established markets across different regions. So we'll be looking at Tokyo in APAC and then Ashburn, Virginia in North America. And then we'll be also looking at the main areas of development across the London market. So we'll be covering Slough West London, the Docklands, well in and then also Hemel Hempstead where AWS have deployed as well and then we'll be looking at where we expect demand and supply to expand in terms of different regions across the London market. Great, thanks Rupert. Um, so it'd be good to start with the highlights of the London market, so what's going on at the moment? So the London market is, as mentioned before, split into four main regions. Slam West London is the largest in terms of IT power and number of data centres, like number of data centres, but the Docklands is the most established. In the late 1990s, um, development was uh, driven by the financial sector with a low latency towards the city and a high connectivity. Ironically, most of the most connected, most of the most connected data centres in the London market are old converted offices. But now, since uh, high high costs for um, development and a lack of available uh, available sites for development, we've seen infrastructure, key infrastructure, be located in the Docklands, and a lot of demand and new supply. Being located now in Slough, West London. Great. So the London market's seen quite a lot of growth over the last few years. Um, what's driving that? Yeah. So if we're looking at Slough, West London, the largest cluster in in the London market, the, the main drivers for for demand in that area is public cloud. That's why we'll see in terms of the market breakdown and composition, wholesale co location is the largest player in that market, looking at IT power in terms of live power as well as under construction and committed. This is different to some markets across different regions. So if you look at somewhere like Tokyo or somewhere like um, Ashburn, Virginia, you might see uh, hyperscale self-build as well as wholesale co-location. But due to London's competitive real estate landscape, we've often seen co-location operators move a lot quicker than hyperscalers. And therefore, we've seen some land banking for future, future demand and supply across different regions. So you mentioned that this is different in other markets. Do you see London changing or do you see it continuing to be a wholesale dominated market? So yeah, if we look at the live IT power, wholesale co-location and retail co-location account for over 90% of the live IT power. But when we look at under construction and committed, we do start to see some self-build um, capacity come, coming in terms of development the pipeline. So hyperscalers have purchased sites all across London. You've got Google purchasing a site in North London in Broxbourne. Microsoft have purchased a number of sites, including Wales and then West of London in Park Royal. And then you've got AWS who expanded West of London to Swindon, Didcot and Bracknell with the Didcot facility going live earlier this year. With all this development in the self-build sites, are we still seeing um, large um, levels of development in co-location sites as well? Yeah, so even though we are seeing more self-build sites entering the, the London market, wholesale co-location is still expanding and probably expanding at a quicker rate, quicker rate. This is a trend we're seeing not just in London, across the whole Amir region. A great market to look at for that in terms of breakdown is Dublin where it started off as a self-build route with hyperscalers entering the market due to the favourable business um, environment with, with Dublin. But now we're starting to see a lot more wholesale co-location come online due to co-location operators, as touched on before, being able to move a lot more quicker. Great, thanks. I think it'd be really useful maybe to delve into some of these sub-markets that you mentioned. Yeah, so we'll start with the largest market, Slough West London. So we'll start with Slough West London. This is the largest sub-market in terms of live IT power and number of data centres. So here you'll see a breakdown of the total supply for the market or the sub-market. So you've got live IT power, this is quite self-explanatory, this is anything that's live and operational. You've got under construction, so this is when the ME fit-out is being carried out or when any ME fit-out that will be carried out in that phase. And then you have the committed power, so this is when all components are ready to be built subject to, dem uh, to the demand, so you've got the building permits and the power is secured. And then you've got the early stage, so this is when a key component is missing for, for the uh, development to take place uh, subject to demand. So as you can see with Slough, Slough and West London, live IT power accounts for a large segment of the market share at the moment. And you have quite a lag between the under construction, the area in grey, and then the committed power. And one of the reasons for this lag is that Slough and West London is now running out of power to some of the key core locations, including... Hayes and Park Royal, an area seeing significant development at the moment uh, due, to, yeah, due to delays with the IBB upgrade. 
um, this is one of this is one of the causes for seeing development expand into different regions due to the kind of the bottleneck of supply coming into key locations where we have seen Google, AWS, and Microsoft all set up availability zones in these areas. Oh, Rupert, this um, constraint in supply. Where, what areas of or even the UK do you think will benefit most from um, this? So yeah, at the moment, Slough West London uh, has um, accounted for most of the hyperscale activity across the London market. You do also have Hamel Hempstead where AWS have deployed mostly through NTT co-location facilities. You've also got Wellen where Microsoft have set up an availability zone. But in terms of hyperscale activity, Slough West London accounts for a large, a large percentage of, of London's um, hyperscale um, deployments. Now we are starting to see deployments uh, expand out of these out of these core locations. So AWS have set up three sites in west of London, uh, to the west of London. So in Didcot, Brackland, and Swindon, with CloudHQ also well positioned to see some of that spillover demand. With them having a site adjacent to the dead, uh, AWS Didcot site, we've also seen recent announcements in Manchester, an area that's tipped to see has always been tipped to see significant activity with KO a co-location operator who have a strong presence in the Slough trading estate as well as north of London announcing a 40 megawatt scheme. Manchester make, does make a lot of sense in terms of room for growth. You've got a lot of available land there. You've also got um, significant power ready for um, significant expansion as well. And then you've got the cables connecting from Liverpool into Dublin as well as up to the Nordics through the Stellium facility in Newcastle. Right. If we look at some of the other metrics here, you've got the availability here with a 7% vacant, vacancy rate across London. Now it's really important when you're looking at this figure, this is very high level. If you looked at different areas in London, this, this figure would vary significantly. So if you looked at kind of some of the areas such as South and West London, the vacancy rate you expect to be much lower. Somewhere such as East London where there's limited hyperscale activity compared to, compared to the West. And then you've also got a breakdown of the market composition of South and West London as well. Obviously, as I touched on before, due to the competitive real estate market in London, you've got a much higher percentage of co-location compared to self-build. But as, as mentioned, Microsoft, Google and um, AWS have all purchased sites now, so we do expect that number to change in the near future. So now we break down the market in terms of composition, you can see the operator type is dominated by co-location. And this just gives you a snapshot of the most established market in London. If you looked at this maybe in 2012, 2011, before we saw the onslaught of public cloud, it might have been more swayed, um, more evenly balanced between co-location retail and co-location wholesale. But one of the main characteristics we do see in more established markets such as London is when the public clouds do enter the market, we'll see um, the market start to be dominated by either co-location wholesale or hyperscale self-build. How do you expect this to change when you start adding in the under construction and uh, committed power to this? We would actually expect it to be even more heavily dominated by co-location wholesale. So if we turn on the under construction and the committed power towards the, um, the market composition, you can see the changes there. The only major difference there is co-location retail will now account for a smaller percentage of the market share and we'll now start to see the public cloud self-build deployments have more of a, more of a say in the, in the capacity, the total capacity of the market. Great. And this just gives you a quick map view of where all the data centers are located in the market. As you can see there, there's a large cluster there. That's where the, the Slough trading estate is. Then you've got Hayes, where Virtus, one of the largest operators in the market. If we look at live IT power, they are the largest operator in London, having a, a strong presence in Hayes. And then you've got Park Royal further towards, towards the metro of London, where you've got uh, operators such as Vantage and Art all having significant capacity in the, in the development pipeline. And then should we go to the Docklands? Yep. So one of the key differences I can see when looking at this is the committed power is uh, far smaller in the uh, in the Docklands as opposed to the um, Slough London, London, the West London and Slough market. Are there any other differences, and why is this so different? Yeah. So even though these two sub markets are the most established markets in in London, there is there are there are major differences in terms of drivers of demand and the competitive landscape for, for both these sub-markets. So as you can see here with the London Docklands, you've got live IT power accounting for a significant amount of the total IT capacity and IT co-location um, co accounting for 100% of all capacity in the market. You've also got a higher vacancy rate in the Docklands compared to Slough and West London due to pre-leases being much rare, much rarer with retail co-location compared to wholesale co-location. 
In terms of drivers with retail co-location, there is a major difference between drivers with retail compared to wholesale as well. In terms of wholesale in London, the main drivers are public cloud. So this is your Microsoft Azure's, your AWS's or your Google's. With the Docklands and retail co-location in particular, there's many different clientele, including government institutions, enterprises, you've got network and telco companies, as well as managed service providers. So there's much more um, very retail co there's much more varied clientele in terms of facilities compared to wholesale co-location. What, what's very interesting looking at that graph is it's pretty evenly split between retail and wholesale co -lo. Um I think there were quite a few wholesale deals over the last few years, so that's obviously changed that. So do you see that a trend continuing and do you see it becoming more wholesale now or, or, or is it likely to stay even? Yeah, so it's important to note when you're looking at this figure that the, the numbers are skewed a bit due to the size of wholesale facilities um, compared to retail facilities. If we looked at the actual number of facilities, there would be a, there's only about three wholesale facilities live in the Docklands compared to around 14 retail co-location facilities. It's just that the wholesale facilities have larger IT capacity. If we look at the under construction committed, you'll see that the Docklands is a retail co-location driven market. With if you, if you compare the under construction and committed, you'll see retail becoming a larger segment of the market share. Um, this is due to schemes coming online such as KDDI, Teddy House, and a number of other retail operators um, producing producing more schemes. And then, so there are, there are obvious constraints in the Docklands due to space and competing uh, uses of land. Where do you see this market expanding over time? Um, I'm sure there is, like Slough and West London, I'm sure there are limits on the power available. Yeah, the, the main issue with the Docklands is the geographical constraints in terms of land land available for data center development. Unlike Slough, there is, there is power available, but now we expect the, the development to go to different regions outside of London due to East, if, if you, so I don't expect a new availability zone to be set up in the east, east of London due to the area already facing similar to constraints that West London is now starting to face. You do have asset classes competing for space. There is a lack of power. That's why I think we've seen hyperscalers such as AWS go west of London with Didcot, Swindon and Bracknell. That's why I think operators are now looking at markets such as Manchester where there's room for growth and there's room for power in terms of accommodating these hyperscale deployments which are becoming larger and larger as demand increases. Great, thanks Rupert. And you mentioned before that you're going to compare London to some international markets. It'd be good to hear more how London compares to those. Yeah, so I think London for Amir, Ashburn, Virginia for North America and then Tokyo for APAC provide really good indications for emerging markets to where markets can go once you see sustained levels of demand and supply. So if we look at Togo here, you can see in terms of live IT power, this is very similar to London's live IT power with just over a gigawatt available alive, available live. Then you have under construction again, this is similar to, to London in terms of 307 megawatts, maybe due to a lack of or less severe supply constraints compared to London, there's a bit of a there's less of a lag between the under construction and committed. And then you have the committed IT power actually accounting for the largest segment of the market share in Tokyo at the moment. Which, as you say, would imply that they're, they're not seeing the same power constraints as London is right now. No, I think London, similar to other markets such as Frankfurt, due to the geographical constraints in terms of supply and availability of land, as well as the lack of power, we have started to see constraints with supply unable to keep up with demand. Another major difference with Tokyo compared to London is if we look at the market composition. In terms of market composition for live IT power, as you can see from the graph here, there's much more of a mixture between wholesale co-location and self builds from the hyperscalers compared to London. Even though we expect this to change with more coming online in terms of self build for London, hyperscalers have already uh, deployed for the self build route in this market. If we go and compare to Ashburn, Virginia as well, the largest market in, in the world, um, you can see the levels of live IT power compared to the other two markets with over two gigawatts of um, capacity live. And then you have a further nearly a gigawatt of under construction capacity and then another significant amount in terms of committed power demonstrating the demand for, for data centers in this region. The under construction is, is just huge. It's, it, it's, it's larger than a lot of markets in Europe have live power right now. Yeah, exactly. If you, a good reference point is to be looking at emerging markets such as Madrid and, uh, Madrid and Milan with both of these sub-market, both of these markets, sorry, looking at around 200 megawatts for live IT power. You can also see a very low vacancy rate with public cloud driving 
driving most of the demand in Northern Virginia. So we go down to look at the market composition in terms of operator type. Again, due to kind of lack of a lack of supply constraints compared to London with availability of land, a surplus of land and significant power in Ashburn, Virginia, there's no surprise there that we've seen hyperscalers um, choose to also deploy for the south build route as well as taking up co wholesale co-location um, uh, as well as taking space within wholesale co-location facilities. I think what that this graph here shows, which is very interesting and a trend we're seeing across the world right now, is that Although the hyperscalers are building at record rates, the amount that's being taken in co-location is even higher. So although there's a lot under development, we can see wholesale increasing their share even further. Yeah, this is a trend we're seeing across multiple markets, um, across EMEA and North America, as well as um, APAC as well. Often the wholesale co-location operators are often, to, um, often able to move a lot quicker than the hyperscalers, as well as just the hyperscalers aren't able to keep up with their own requirements. With companies such as like Oracle, companies such as Oracle's uh, deployments and requirements going up significantly in the last 12 months, we expect wholesale co-location to keep, to keep increasing, at, uh, increasing at a rapid rate. So bring it back to the London market group, it'd, really be good, it'd be really good to hear where you think the development is going to go. Yeah, so as mentioned before, with the supply constraints in Slough and West London, we have seen development expand, expand into different regions. So an example here is one of the property overview pages you do get with DC Byte. This shows AWS's facility in Didcot. As you can see from the image there, Will and I did undertake a site visit at the end of last year with the facility uh, looking near completed with, um, with us expecting it to go live and operational at the beginning of this year. Um, as you can see, there is room for expansion with the facility, but we do have CloudHQ nearby due to AWS not securing as much power as they had um, planned before. If we go down below, it will show, it'll give you details in terms of the address of the, of the facility as well as the latitude and longitude. And then this gives you a breakdown of the facility metrics. So as you can see there, the first phase went live earlier this year. We've got a further phase under construction with the full capacity of the facility once live and operational to be 39 megawatts. Great, thanks Rupert. It's really, uh, really good to hear your thoughts on the London market. Yeah, thank you very much. And please do get in touch if you'd like to speak about the London market or any other markets across the EMEA region. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.